Hello, welcome to all of you to this video. Here I am going to explain the concept of testing of hypothesis and confidence interval for population mean mu. And I will explain both Z and T test. First of all, you need to look at the two branches of statistics. As you all have known that uh, there are two branches of statistics. One is descriptive, the other one is inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics deals with describing your data into tables, graphs and summary numbers. Whereas inferential statistics deals with drawing inferences about population parameters based on the sample information. Remember, descriptive just describe your data, inferential to draw inference about population parameters based on the information contained in sample. So inferential statistics have two further branches. The one is testing of hypothesis, the other one is confidence intervals. We will just look a little bit more into statistical inference. Basically, it is a about reaching conclusions about characteristics of entire population using the information contained in a sample. All we can see here there is sample statistics and we know that sample statistics are the numbers which have been computed from a sample. Sample is part of population whereas population is the entire group about which we want to draw conclusions. Population parameters are fixed numbers. We have already gone through it, fixed numbers. They are true quantities, but they are unknown quantities, unknown numbers. So we need to draw conclusions about these fixed, true, unknown numbers based on sample statistics. Okay, there are about six steps in testing of hypothesis. The first of all is the formulation of hypothesis. And after the formulation of hypothesis, we will define a little bit about the level of significance and then there are two steps. One deals with drawing a, a sample from population and extracting uh, necessary information from the sample. The other one, to use that sample information in order to calculate the value of Z and T which we will use for the process of decision making. So in the fifth step we will see how to use tables, Z table and the T table and also the important and the most technical work in testing of hypothesis is setting up the decision rules. And the last step is of course about the decisions and interpretations. Here we go. The first of all the formulation of hypothesis. Well on this screen I will explain three different examples and uh, the two type of hypothesis the null and the alternate hypothesis the first of all the first example says that uh, it is a claim of an automobile manufacturer that the new model of automobile is more economical in fuel efficiency comparatively look the new model of automobile produced by the company is more economical. We want to test this statement. Whereas the old model is giving you an average of 24 kilometers per liter. So how will I write this statement? How will I write this hypothesis? Just look, mu is greater than 24. If the average of the new model is greater than 24, that means the claim is true. In this case, the claim of the manufacturer is true. Well, in another case where mu is less than or equal to 24, the claim will not be true. We will see it later. Just look at this example. Here, the manufacturer of a thread claims that on average, the mean breaking strength of a particular brand of thread is 9.63. Well, we want to test that and uh, on the base based on a sample information that whether the threat has become inferior. So when will the threat become inferior? If the average breaking strength is less than 9.63 then we can say that the threat has become inferior otherwise it is not the case. Now concentrate on the third and the last example. 
I want to test the hypothesis about the average statistics marks of the students for example in your class is 45. How can I write this statement? Mu is equal to 45 means the average of the population. I consider your class as a population. Suppose in your class there are 90 students and I said that the capital N is 90 and that is my population and I just wanted to test whether the average marks in statistics is 45 for all these 90 students. This is my hypothesis which I want to test. Now just go back to the first example where we have uh, built the hypothesis about the fuel efficiency. If mu is greater than 24 the claim is true as far as the manufacturer is concerned. When will the claim be false? when mu is less than or equal to 24. Two statement are making a complete set now. Whether the average of the new vehicle is less than or equal to 24 or it is greater than 24, there is no other case. The first mathematical expression have equality sign with it, so we will call it null hypothesis. Now the second uh, mathematical expression it has inequality sign just greater than so we will call it an alternate hypothesis these are the two type of hypothesis which i was talking about at the start of this screen now in second example mu greater than or equal to 9.63 is a complement to the statement mu is less than 9.63 these two statements are making a complete sets now the hypothesis or mathematical expression having equality sign will be treated as null hypothesis whereas the hypothesis with inequality signs are treated as alternate hypothesis. Similarly, this is null hypothesis. In the third example, so what will be an alternate in this case mu is not equal to 45. Look, this is now complete set mu equals, mu equals 45 or mu is not equal to 45. There is no other case. So this is a way of making hypothesis, the formulation of hypothesis. Now in all these three cases there are three different tests. We call it the first one is right tail test. We will see it in detail. And then the second one is left tail test. Whereas the third one is two tail test. Okay, uh, just look at the inequality signs in the alternate hypothesis. In the first hypothesis, it is greater, so it is right tail test. In the second example, it is less, mu is less than 9.63, so it is left tail test. In the third example, mu is not equal to 45, so it is two tail test. So the type of test will be determined from the sign in an alternate hypothesis. Here we go in the next slide. Null hypothesis is an assumption about population parameter to be challenged. Uh, in this slide, I will uh, explain a concept uh, of level of significance, the alpha, and some other terminologies used in testing of hypothesis. I will start it by writing all three type of hypothesis. By now, you know that the first one here is a left tail test. The second one here is right tail test and the last and the last one is two tail test. Mu naught may be any number. This table has two columns and two rows. In columns, I have written actual situation. For example, in actual H naught is true or H naught is false. There is no third scenario for null hypothesis. It may be true or it may be false. Now come back to the decision. Now on the base of a sample, you will take decision about H0. And there are two type of decisions which we can make on base of sample. Either to reject H0 or don't reject H0. Right here, it's a type 1 error. Rejecting your null hypothesis when it is actually true. Similarly, 
डोंट रिजेक्ट योर नल हाइपोसिस वेन इट इज फॉल्स दिस इज टाइप टू एर सो इन दिस टेबल यू कैन सी टू टाइप ऑफ एर वन इज टाइप वन एर वन इज टाइप टू एर वेर एज द अदर टू सिचुएशन आर बेसिकली द करेक्ट डिसीजनस द प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ टाइप वन एर प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ और चांस ऑफ कमिटिंग टाइप वन एर इज नोन एज लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस एंड वी विल डिनोट दिस लेवल विद साइन एल्फा Similarly, if alpha say five percent, alpha means alpha five percent means that there are five chances in hundred of incorrectly rejecting your null hypothesis. So, contrary to alpha, one minus alpha is known as the level of confidence. If alpha is five percent, means one minus alpha, it is ninety five percent. So, it is also known as confidence coefficient, and we will use it in testing of hypothesis second part the confidence interval the probability of type 2 error is beta and 1 minus beta is called the power of the test the third and most important uh, concept the formula or the rule which will be used as a basis to reject your null hypothesis or to retain it let's see the formula just focus on it x bar minus mu of x bar divided by the square root of sigma square of x bar well you have noticed this x bar is sample mean and this quantity here mu of x bar just recall the sampling distribution of x bar it is the mean of all possible sample means similarly this is the variance of all possible sample means you have already proved their properties you know that mu of x bar is equal to mu and sigma square x bar is equal to sigma square over n in case of sampling with replacement just replacing these two values back in the first formula we get x bar minus mu divided by sigma square over n under root and this mathematical expression will follow z distribution because we have used population variance in it if in case population variance is unknown if population variance is unknown then we can use sample variance instead of population variance so just replacing sample variance in place of population variance as square instead of sigma square by doing this now this mathematical expression it will follow z distribution only if n is greater than or equal to 30 whereas the same expression will follow t distribution with degrees of freedom n minus 1 if your sample size is less than 30 so from this screen you can determine that we will use z test when there is population variance and when the population variance is unknown we will look at the sample size if the sample size is greater than 30 we will use z test and if the sample size is less than 30 we will use t test the formula in both cases is same the fourth step is about drawing sample from population calculate sample mean and sample variance from the sample in this case and to use these numbers to calculate the value of z and t explained in the last slide now we'll move to the most uh, interesting and most technical topic of the testing of hypothesis that is to find the critical values for the cn making and we will explain the critical values in all three type of hypothesis that is two tail test right tail test and left tail test in case the test is two tail and alpha is 5% so if the test is two tail we will divide this alpha by 2 and if test is right or left tail we will not divide it with 2 here is the normal curve the standard normal curve with center or mean value 0 50% area is below that mean whereas the other 50% is above that mean 0.5 is the probability 
which is below this 0 and 0 0.5 is the probability which is above that 0. So total probability under the curve or total area under the curve is 1. We will mark alpha by 2 and since it is a 2 tail test, so we will divide alpha equally in both tails. Alpha by 2 here in the right tail and alpha by 2 is in left tail. So in both tails the shaded area with red now if we sum it up in both tail we will get alpha and the rest of the area in the curve is basically 1 minus alpha. We are looking for critical values here. We need these two values. This one and this one known as minus z and plus z since this distribution is symmetric around 0. So on both side the value will be same but the signs will be different. So we will just look now how we will see the standard normal table for this value z alpha by 2. So as I have explained we need this value and this value. Just for record if this area is 0.025 why it is 0 0.025? Since it is alpha by 2, alpha by 2 is 0 0.025. Similarly, this tiny area is also 0 0.025. But just for the moment, if this area is 0 0.05, this one, so, and the area behind this line is 0 0.975 because the area under the curve is 1. So if all this area is 0.975, we need to look the table at 0.975 in order to find this value. Okay, here is the normal probability table from where we can see the value of z against a certain probability based on our alpha. So as we have selected alpha as 5% in this case, and as far as the two tail test is concerned with alpha 5% alpha by 2 comes out to be 0 0.025 so it means we need the value of z below which there would be 0 0.975 area so let's just scroll this mouse and search 0 0.975 look at this well this value is the probability value. We need the z value against this probability which is 1.96. So you have to read it like 1.9 and 6. Just see the data and this value is 1.96 here. So therefore automatically we will write here minus 1.96 since this distribution is symmetric and around the value of 0 the mean of z. As far as the right tail is, test is concerned if for example our alpha is 0 0.05 we will place this alpha on the right tail of the distribution. This is the same distribution the z symmetric centered around 0. Both sides the center the area is 50 percent so it will make a total area 100 percent or the total probability is equal to 1. Here we go. The alpha is on the right tail of the distribution and this time the critical value for right tail test will be positive and this is that value. So if this area, the shaded area is 0 0.05 then the area behind this shaded area will be 0 0.95 and this time around we will be looking at this value in the z table 0 0.95. Well after watching the table we found that this value is 1.645 and we denote this value with z at alpha because we haven't divided alpha by 2 now. It is z alpha now and why it is positive since it is on the right tail of the distribution. Third and the last case is the left tail test. Here if for example alpha is 5% we will place this alpha 
on the left tail. Now this area, the shaded area on the left tail is 0 0.05. So if this area is 0 0.05, the area behind this is 1 minus alpha and that is 0 0.95. And this time around we will see 0 0.05 in the table to find this value, this value. And this value after watching the table is minus 1.645 and we also write it minus Z alpha. This is the left tail test. I will explain now how to see the table values for T test. First I will start from the two tail test and just suppose that our sample size is 15, alpha is 5%. Since it is a two tail test, we will divide this alpha by 2 and we will get 0 0.025 is the probability. The degree of freedom in this case is n minus 1. Please note, it will not always be n minus 1 since we are discussing the t table for testing of hypothesis in case of population mean mu and in case of population mean mu, the degree of freedom is n minus 1. Let us just see the t table. Here is the t table. In columns you have values of alpha and in rows you have degrees of freedom. We have degree of freedom 14 and we need to look this table for the value of alpha at 0 0.025 since it is a two tail test. We will deal with alpha by 2 not alpha. Here we go. This is the column 0 0.025 and this is the degrees of freedom n minus 1 to 14 and here we have the value 2.14. Remember the, the shape of the distribution of T and Z are the same. So here we go with the T distribution. These areas as we have divided alpha by 2, we know that they are 0 0.025 on both sides. And here this value is positive here and the same value is negative here since the distribution is symmetric. So this is how we will see the table value for t in case of two tail test and we denote it with t alpha by 2 and minus t alpha by 2. Similarly for the right tail test sample size is 8 alpha is 0 0.05 and degree of freedom is n minus 1. Since it is a right tail test so we will not divide our alpha by 2. We will just put all the alpha 0 0.05 in the right tail of the distribution. Here we go the table of T. Here are the table value 1.895. Distribution is symmetric. Here we go. Look. Okay, for the left tail test, just suppose we have a sample size of 17. Alpha is 5%. Therefore, degree of freedom in this case is n minus 116. And this is the table. So we need to look at the column at 0 0.05 and the 16 is the degree of freedom for 16th row. Our table value will be 1.746 in this case. Since it's a left tail test, so we'll put a minus sign with it. Look, here we go, the minus sign with it. And we say or denote it with minus T alpha. Okay, at the last, we'll see some of the examples now. The first example is, uh, it states that, again, it is about the automobile manufacturer who has claimed that an automobile is driven on average more than 12,000. So remember, we will make the hypothesis from the claim, miles per year. To test this claim, a random sample of 100 automobile owners are asked to keep the record. So random sample sample size is 100. Population mean mu is 12,000 and this 12,000 will help us in constructing hypothesis. This is the sample and after taking the record, would you agree with the claim if the random sample showed an average? So the average of the random sample is 12,500 miles and the standard deviation is 24 miles. Let us just write some of the information which is given. 
n is given x bar is given and s is given so these three numbers are given when will the claim be true automobile is driven on average more than 12000 look more than 12000 this is the claim of the manufacturer okay if this claim is not true this statement written right above this will be true and this is our null hypothesis in this case the second step is the level of significance okay we can assume it right if it is not given we can assume it 5% in this case we assumed it as 5% third step is the test statistic or the rule formula used for the calculation here look why i have used z test here because the sample size is greater than 30 the formula is same which we have seen before x bar minus mu over f square over n just replacing all these given values here in this formula we can calculate it to 2.083 now this is the value which will determine whether to reject the hypothesis or to retain it how we will determine that the fourth step that there's no need of any calculation because all the values for x bar s are given we just need to put these values in the formula to get the calculations right the fifth step is the cn rule and the cn rule is to reject the null hypothesis now which type of test is it? It's a right test, tail test. It's a right tail test, fine. Right tail test. So here is the decision rule. If your calculated value, this one 2.083, if this is greater than this critical value, we will reject H0. Look, this is the rejection area, the alpha. So if your value 2.083 is greater than 1.645, I have already explained how this value has came from Z table 1.645. So in this case your value Z now 2.083 is greater than 1.645. Therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the claim is true. So similarly the second example. It has been found from experience that the mean breaking strength of the particle brand of thread is 9.63. We have already explained how to develop the hypothesis in this case. Recently a sample of 36 species, so small n is 36. Showed a mean breaking strength of 8.93. It means x bar is also given there is no calculation again in this example however one thing to note here standard deviation so this sigma is given look sigma is 1.4 now remember when population variance or population standard deviation is known we will use z test this hypothesis we have already discussed in examples how to develop this here we go the level of significance the formula since we have the value of population variance therefore we will use z test there is no question of sample size here so the value is minus 3 let the cn rule we will reject h0 since this is the left tail test now we will reject h0 if this value is less than the critical value look if this value is less than this value, the critical value. Here, right here, this alpha is rejection region now. Since minus 3, okay, just put minus here. Since minus 3 is less than minus 1.64, therefore, in this case, we will reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the thread has become inferior. That means our conclusion is the alternate hypothesis in this case. Okay, the third and the last example, the average amount of pesticide that is packed in a cane is 6 liter or random sample of 10 canes showed mean amount of pesticides. Okay, in this example, the average amount that is packed in a cane is 6 liters. And what we want to test is whether the process is out of control. Look, 
a sample of 10 have been selected which showed the average packing is 6.1 with a standard deviation 0.25 when will the process be out of control look the hypothesis mu is equal to 6 mean process is in control mu not equal to 6 process is out of control whether that machine packs less than 6 or greater than 6 in both cases we will consider the process is out of control alpha and then the formula why we use t test here it is important to note that we don't have population variance so we will look at the sample size sample here in this example is 10 so we know that it is less than 30 so therefore we will use t-test the t-test produces the value of 1.26 and the fifth step is about the decision rule since it is a two-tail test now look it is a two-tail test we will reject the hypothesis if our value t value is greater than t alpha by 2 or it is less than minus t alpha by 2 look there are two decisions because it's a two tail test we will divide our alpha on both sides of the distribution so we have two rejection regions right one is the left tail the other one is on the right tail so these values will have been taken from the t table by using degrees of freedom n minus 1 and since 1.26 is not greater than this nor it is less than this so it means it falls inside this acceptance region so therefore we are unable to reject the null hypothesis in this case and we will say that we retain the null hypothesis that is process is in control well regarding the confidence interval of population mean mu here is the formula from which you can calculate uh, the confidence interval Confidence interval covers under the topic of uh, interval estimation. <coughs> x bar is a point estimation. We need to add something to x bar in order to get the upper limit of an interval estimate. And similarly, we need to minus the same value for getting the lower limit of that interval estimation. So we will have an interval like this where we will have lower limit and the upper limit and this interval will be based on the value of alpha 1 minus alpha is the confidence level here uh, we will take this uh, value the table value from the z table if the sample size is greater than 30 otherwise if the sample size is less than 30 here we will use the table value from the t table the calculations are easier if we are going to construct these intervals for 100 different samples we will find 95 of such intervals will contain the exact and true value of the population in other words we can see from the constructed interval that there are 95 percent chances that this interval will contain the true population mean this is the same example that we have used in testing of hypothesis for the two day test the mean and the standard deviation are given and they have asked us to find 95 percent confidence interval 95 percent confidence interval means alpha is five percent alpha is five percent so by using alpha five percent we will take the table value of t from the same two tail test look there the formula is little bit amended we will use t alpha by 2 instead of z alpha by 2 since t test is applicable here and this is a two tail graphics of t distribution at 5 percent with degrees of freedom 9 so we have so we have table value minus 2.262 and 2.262 we will put this value 2.262 here and the standard deviation 0.25 with sample size 10 and mean 6.1 here we go this formula by solving by solving it we got the lower limit 5.92 and the upper limit 6.28 it, it means that there are 95 percent chances that this interval will contain the true value of population mean or otherwise we can say that if we repeat to take 
100 samples and we construct 100 intervals, 100 confidence intervals, 95 of them will contain the exact and true value of the population parameter mu.